Hey guys, Tone here, and today we're going to be taking another look at this Warhammer Reaping Invisibility Haste Charm build uh, that we looked at recently. So if you haven't seen the first video of this, I did a whole build showcase on um, this kind of general build type, and we got, we got like really in-depth on some of the numbers, so I highly recommend you check that out. And we did a little bit of an example of that. We cleared two floors um, fully, 27, 28, got all the lumen sounds on those floors. And we're just going to continue that and see how far we can get. Uh, and if you want to play this seed, I, I think I mentioned that it was from the weekend contest number 500. Um, just so quick what that's about. The weekend contest is something that the Brogue Forum subreddit, so reddit.com slash r slash Brogue Forum. Every week they do a seed and everyone participates in it and shares the results. Um, you have like two or three days to play the seed. It occurs over the weekend. Um, so it's not a lot of time for me to play usually, so I don't always participate, but I wanted to play in this one. Um, and it's just fun with how Brogue is designed, seeing how different people, you know, use different things. Because you kind of have to pick what items you're going to use. You don't, like, use everything. So that's always fun to do. But yeah, this was number 500. So the, the seed for this is 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500. So if you want to try this. And also, the contest after this one, um, 501, was another contest that had a, uh, it actually a lot more friendly than this one, I think. I haven't played it yet. I think I'm going to save that and maybe stream it or something. Um, it had another good opportunity to play a build like this, as, as well as a couple other strong builds. So I don't want to spoil that one too much. But if people want to give this a type of build a try, you can try this seed or that next one. And I'll, I'll throw that, that seed in the, uh, the comments below. And if I forget to, just uh, leave me a comment and I'll or I mean the description, but leave me a comment and I'll update the description for it. Um, so yeah, I've been not wearing my splint mail just to leave my stealth range low when I'm not in invisibility. And if you remember, like one of the big issues that this build has at the moment is that like we're lit up right now. Um, actually, I'm still invisible, so it doesn't matter. But when I'm not invisible, our stealth range can be quite high when we're in vision. So, and our what we can actually see is very short. See, I can only see about two tiles away. So we can easily get sniped by dragons or have a, a lich summon like phantoms, which can get kind of bad for us. So what we normally like to do is use uh, telepathy. This build is absolutely unstoppable. When you have telepathy, you can see where everything is. And I kind of want to showcase that, but I also want to save these because I think that's what's most prudent if we want to try and collect every Lumen Stone, which is like the the most you can do in this game. It's like the highest achievement in Brogue. So I kind of want to save those. So I feel like if we spent 15 plus hours playing the rest of this game, like several hours per floor, we could probably like minimize like a lot of the opportunities where we might get sniped like that. I don't feel like doing that. I don't want to record that long. I don't, honestly, I don't want to play that long. I don't want to, you guys have to watch that long. So we're kind of going to, going to kind of cruise through. There's a chance we just get like sniped in and die. But I want to save these telepathy potions. Um, and I want to like see what we can do here. As we get deeper, so our invisibility doesn't last that long. So we, we need to kind of keep attacking things so we can recharge our charms with reaping. As we get deeper, that becomes more common. So, I don't know. We'll see how this all, all goes. Um, I'm low on health right now. We have a regen ring, so I should put that on. And actually, I should put the awareness on as well. No longer invisible. I see a glow here that often means there's a lich. All my charms are charged. Secret door awareness doing its thing. Oh, snap. Okay, this is really bad. Actually, wait. So something hits you. I was thinking this was a phantom from what looks like there's probably a lich down here. They have this green glow that could just be grass, but this looks a little more lichish to me. Um, this is actually just the golem hitting me because when you're in a doorway, it says something hits you because you didn't like see it before you open the door, I guess. Um, there's a Lumen Stone. So what we want to do here, this Golem's not going to do a ton of damage. I wanted to be able to heal a little bit, but we're not going to get that opportunity. Um, so we're going to want to go and pop our Invisibility Charm. 
Ooh, there's something else interesting here that I'll show you guys in a second too, um, involving our wand of invisibility. So we're gonna use our invisibility charm right away. Then we're gonna pop our haze charm. And then we really need to get away from this golem to reset them to wandering. So we're gonna use blinking, whoop, not tunneling. We wanna like go up here. So now this golem is gonna reset to wandering because they're far away and we're invisible. And hopefully we can just kind of use reaping and our charms to just clear the rest of this room. The dragons are sleeping. There's a few wandering enemies here. So let's see how this goes. Uh, and I'm gonna just like talk through this one a little bit. Again, like we went in depth on this last video, so you can check that out. Um, once I clear this room, I think we'll just kind of like chill a bit and I'll just like fight and not like have to explain every fight because it's gonna be a lot of the same thing, I think. Each everything's gonna be a little different, but it's also gonna be a little bit the same. All right. Well, I think I have to take. I'm gonna leave awareness on because we haven't seen this room that much. Okay. We want, we want to pop this dragon. I want to approach it on the diagonal. You see this golem reset to wandering because we blinked away while we were invisible. I could die in one hit, by the way, if uh, one of these dragons hits me. There's actually a chance that we don't kill with our warhammer at its current enchantment and our strength. Uh, which would be bad. Actually, we could survive that because if you attack some, sneak attack something, it gets a turn of off balance. We could blink away and I think it would forget about us. So it wouldn't get an opportunity to breathe fire, but just something to keep in mind. All right, so we're hasted and invisible. We're going to want to put on our other reaping ring. Do we? Yeah, I think we will. Come down here. Dragon's still sleeping. Splatter it. Wait, the dragon plunges out of sight? That's weird. Is that knocking into a chasm? Dispatch that dragon. We did, wow. I wonder if the dragon died or not. That's interesting. I'm really curious if that dragon is dead. I don't know if we'll find out because it'll probably regen by the time we get to the floor below. That was really interesting. But our charms have recharged. Let's go ahead and throw a reaping and, or a regen and awareness back on. Grab this looming stone. We'll pack, so I need to drop something. We probably want to ditch the staff of poison at this point. We could just use a telepathy potion. Potentially drop the splint mail. I feel like I'm gonna want this in, in case like we had to face phantoms. I think it's time to ditch the staff of poison. Okay, so the other thing I was going to point out here when we entered the room, see this formation right here? If we stand on this tile where I have my mouse cursor highlighted and zap this crystal with one of our wands, it'll 100% zap back to us. So that's the kind of opportunity you can use to use an invisibility wand on yourself. I don't think we want to do that yet. I feel like we can save that a bit. I don't know, maybe it would be good on these upper floors. It's gonna have three to five charges. We're in depth 29 of 40. 
There's 10 levels for us to clear still. Maybe we should just go ahead and use that. Because we're going to be going out here and we're going to want to be... And being invisible will be nice out here so we don't have to worry about getting sniped off screen. And I think on certain levels are like more favorable to exploring like that. Or there's going to be just be more enemies so we can keep recharging our invis charm and keep our invis up time more as we get deeper. Let's give this a try. And plus I get to demonstrate this. So we just zap that crystal. And boom, the bolt reflects off a crystal formation. So you can't just zap any crystal from any place. But if you're in a, a tunnel like this with walls too deep on each side of you, I mean, they can go even deeper, but at least too deep like this. And then one tile between you and the crystal, it'll always work. That's the other thing this tunneling wand does for us is we can create this situation on the edges of the map by tunneling. Because the edges of the map are always crystal. It'll show up as a, a dark... Uh, as like just rock first and then we'll become crystal if you zap it again So we now have like a bunch of turns of invisibility. I don't remember how long this these last for Cool Here's a lich uh, we are invisible so I don't actually have to do anything We should probably use our haste charm as much as possible though because that'll keep our invisibility going Pop the lich. Um, oh shoot, I didn't have a uh, reaping on. Well, fortunately, I just used my uh, my invis wand, so I don't actually need the invis charm. The haste we can we can work without for now. There's a tentacle horror down there. I think we want to use blinking and haste like very liberally here. since we can recharge it, and then that'll give us... Um, more charges back. Or it'll, it'll give us more time while we're invisible. But we can keep recharging this with our reaping. But we do have to equip it. My health is almost full from that regen. Very useful ring. Cool. My charms are recharged. This plus one's always going to be a little slower. This recharges every 527 turns. Um, but that's how this build works. Let's go into chill mode. I'm going to cut back in the commentary a bit. We're just going to vibe out here, I think. Um, I'm just going to throw on some tunes and play through some levels. Should leave awareness on. Infestation is pretty annoying. Fortunately, we can blink over it and such. I'm using the W key for quick swap, and uh, that's in CE 1.10 to swap my reaping and awareness rings here. Maybe there's paralysis in here from that vent, but I'm trusting awareness to find the traps. There's two of them, and it clutched out for us. Looks like the edge of the map, so I'm not going to keep exploring the top right there. It's a glow from the warden. I blink past him.
Wandering Dragon. Um, so they move two tiles per turn. Well, not if we're hasted. So we haste here. They move next to us. Bop it. Dispatched. Oh, so it would say dispatched. What was that one that fell down the chasm? Yeah, so we didn't kill that one. We just hit it in its sleep and then it plunged out of sight. I guess if we weren't going to kill one, it's nice for it to not be on the level anymore. I didn't recharge our haste charm that much. I only left the plus four reaping on, um, but we kind of low rolled that, I guess. I didn't have a turn to swap. I can recharge off of this guy, though. Yeah, everything's charged now. fairly confident there was a secret door on this wall because um, brimstone can't be the only path through the level it doesn't look like there's a path down here so it looked like we had to get through here somehow and that proved correct well, I was gonna have Kraken but we don't really care about them trap there an agile dragon so this can move four tiles in a turn but only two if we're hasted let's pop haste and move two and is now adjacent to us we'll bop it that fully recharged our haste even though we only had the one plus four reaping on Same idea, there had to be a secret room, door into this room. Uh, but there's nothing there. Kind of wish I could see this one tile, but hopefully there's no Lewin stones hiding there. Our invisibility has almost worn off, so that one charge gave us about half a floor of exploration. about to be not invisible and near light from the brimstone. I think I'm actually going to blink out of here before that wears off. And we're still lit here because of the grass, but it is what it is. All right, I'm going to... Oh, I was thinking that Agile Golem was going to move two tiles, but of course it only moves one because I was hasted. Now it's going to move two. I'm just going to walk away from it. So this level has three lumen stones. The first three floors have three lumen stones. The next five floors have two lumen stones, and the rest have one. But here's a hunting dragon. We're not invisible. This is kind of like what we are concerned about normally. And see, like, this doesn't happen. We don't get surprised by this if we have telepathy. That's why telepathy is so important. So if I attack this with a Warhammer, I probably miss most of the time. 61% chance to hit. Well, not most of the time, but more often than I'd like to. If I use haste right now, depending on the timing, the dragon either gets a turn or it doesn't. If I, if I use Invis, it knows where we are. If I blink away, it'll know where we are, but we might be able to blink in such a way that it can't shoot us. And then we can use our charms. Doesn't look 
think that's possible. I think it'll always be able to see us. There's nothing clever we can do here. I think using haste first is the best move here. We potentially take a hit. Dragon's now off balance. So we get two turns here. So we want to go invisible. Now we want to blink away. We actually don't want to blink that far. I think I want to blink right here. Should be enough. Although after they move, is that going to be enough? The thing is, I don't want to... I have to walk past it, back across this grass while I'm on fire. Maybe that's the least of my worries right now. Alright, let's not worry about that. I'm going to blink over here. Which should guarantee that they break their AI from hunting back to wandering, which means we can sneak attack them again. Let's go ahead and put our ring back on. Dragon's wandering. Dispatched. So since I walked through the grass, the burning reset. Uh, burning lasts for seven turns, and it does, I think, between one and three damage per turn. So, what, we just reset two or three turns of burning? It's actually not that much damage. I'd like to lose as little health as possible, though. So if we could have avoided it, uh, we could have. I just wasn't 100% sure if blinking into this corner gave us enough space if they, like, moved to prevent us from getting hit again. So I didn't want to risk that. Uh, but we should throw on regen now. Just to start recovering this. Let's go awareness back on. Dragon. Haste. Put our wreathing rings back on. Oh, I'm not invisible. Whoops. Thought I had an extra turn there. I, I wanted to wait till the last turn to re refresh this, but I made a mistake. So we have a hunting dragon again. I am hasted invisible, so this time I can just blink over here. We should be okay. It is now wandering. Probably coming our way, so I'm just going to wait a turn so it comes into us. One thing, even if they're wandering, they might wander... If they're going to wander onto a tile that they don't know you're at, they might hit you anyway, so we just got to watch out for that. So I'm going to let it come to us. And then we hit it. Charms recharged. Awareness and region back on. I'll search a few times. Yeah, this room's probably nothing. This wouldn't be a bad room to regen in, except the warden's gonna be a little annoying. I think we'll regen eventually. That regardless, um, let's fight this golem mostly just so I can keep invis up and just recharge it off of them. Stone. 
grass is a little scary. Why is that door open? Oh, there's a crack in there. We could recharge. Hmm. There's an opportunity here to use our charms and hit the Kraken to recharge it. And then we we're going to be invisible. But also if the Kraken goes away, then I don't have my charms. So I don't think that's worth it. Alright, well. There's an easy room for us to maintain our charms and invisibility and all that good stuff. Lumen Stone for this depth. So that dragon swap to hunting, but then immediately back to wandering. Kraken on this tile. That is hilarious. He's stuck. Okay. Well, now we don't have to worry about the Kraken getting away. Dispatch something, catching it unaware. Perfect. Can I blink past this dude? Hell yeah. There's our there's the exit. We have all the lumen stones. Let's keep going. I'd like to blink through here a bit if we can. Enter the next floor invisible would be nice. Ooh, I didn't recharge my haste charm that much with that hit. That's why we have another haste charm and why I didn't... One of the reasons I didn't put another charge enchant into this is because I had two of them. a lot. I think I'm just going to fight him.
This is a scary room to be in. Not invisible. This is where rings of light and clairvoyance are really nice because you can see a lot further using those. This build would actually be excellent with a ring of light. If I could see past my stealth range, which is only seven tiles with no armor on, I would know whether I need to pre use invisibility before a monster could see me. search there because I suspected that there was potentially a door over here. I didn't have awareness on long enough to have it reliably find anything. I wonder what my stealth range will be right now. Be a dark tile. I don't want that lich to see me. This is a Lich Glow. I don't want to waste a lot of time. This diagonal corridor is like a lot of zigzag, like a lot of moves versus a blink. So I think I want to blink down here. See how little nutrition we've used so far? Can we just eat this food real quick? I'm not going to carry it. has summoned phantoms. We're just going to try and walk into them randomly. <laughs> this is really awkward. just now. Hmm. 
There's two things we can do. It says there should be two phantoms alive right now. We either get away and zap ourselves with invisibility. So we could wander around without having to use our charm, which only works when we're your enemies. Or I could use a telepathy potion. We're gonna have to drop something to pick up a Lumen Stone on this death anyways, which makes telepathy seem maybe not a terrible idea. Although I'm still open to dropping Splint Mail, maybe Fire Immunity, maybe this one of Teleportation. Regardless, we're going to blink away. Maybe just ignore them for a bit. to my reefing again got punished a bit for it actually i can fix that with this dude It's a good chance there's going to be enemies behind this door, which makes me feel like I should just preemptively pop invisibility. So that's the thing I was talking about as we get deeper in the dungeon, like this might actually get easier when there's more enemies. Because that's going to be pretty guaranteed in a few levels here that every room will have enemies in it. If I use invisibility here right now and there's no enemies in here, that could be a problem. I think I'm going to use it though. No enemies yet. Find some golems that they'll do. I don't even have haste, which is a little problematic. guys. Boom, they're awake. Hop 
this again. They're all wandering again. I want to get past them. Could be dangerous. I think we just... Go around this way a bit. We know they're the oh. Swap awareness back in. Actually, search for a second. Stones yet. No downstairs either. Unless it's like right here. Which means it's all probably on the other half of the map. Uh, remember, there's phantoms over here too, we don't want to forget about. Alright, we need to recharge. This guy, he knocks back onto the paralysis trigger, potentially kills us. Everything's charged. The blink staff takes a little longer to recharge, so it's not going to be full if I'm using it a lot, which I am right now. Tunneling staff here soon. Probably blink over here.
problem. I don't even have a lot of blinking charges to get around right now. dead. Plus 9 Warhammer should hit them reliably. And this Ectoplasm here was a, a sign that a Phantom was potentially in the area. But it could have moved a lot. I don't know how often they drop that. Uh, there's another one. Okay, all Phantoms on this floor should be dead. Excellent. Oh, so the other one, was it just sitting here? I don't know. I think we got lucky. It'd be interesting to just watch a recording with Omniscience on and see how phantoms act. So walking around without invis is slightly less dangerous than it was before. Still quite dangerous, though. Okay, our first Lumen Stone of this depth. We gotta drop something else. I think Splint Mail and Fire Immunity are at the top of my list right now. I'm gonna drop the splint. I of course want all these things, but this is part of the design behind these lumen stones is that they force you to like not have all the tools you want. which means I can go invisible. I think that hunting golem should forget about me. Let's find out. Yeah, it's wandering now. It's probably gonna wander here, so I'm gonna bop him again. Maybe not. Uh-oh. Oh, Cossack gas, that's fine. I will wake up all those golems. I think that's a good thing here. Probably leave awareness on with so many golems here. I wonder where this last lumen stone is.
Oh, there was a secret door there that appeared. Okay. I had a feeling there was something there. I wanted to try and dig through here. I didn't get the opportunity. We didn't have awareness on for a while when we were in this corner. That's why I tried to swap it on quickly for a moment there earlier. That's all the lumen stones on this floor. We do not have invisibility and we're in a very lit up area. Seizes your legs times three. But yeah, these charger charms pretty well. Uh, I think we can blink over these. Yeah. I wouldn't mind one more recharge. Something seizes your legs times four. Okay. You hit something. Everything's recharged. Let me go. Viz and haste. Oh, this didn't mean four things to use my legs on that turn. means that Kraken I think was low on health and I didn't recharge my charms that much. It's a little unfortunate, but let's get to this next floor. And find something else to fight. Oh no, not a hunting lich. Wait, no, that's not real. We were talking about this before. They're always hunting when they first spawn. Because I'm invisible here. This thing's not allowed to be hunting. Dragon. Okay, it's wandering. I don't know, like, the exact timings of some of those things. So, like, if you walk into their view, they'll swap to hunting. And then if I use invisibility that turn, I think they might get one action against us. Actually, the, the Lich proved that earlier. So this dragon, I think, potentially could have hit us with fire there. But he's wandering now? I guess he moved towards us and then went to wandering instead of breathing fire. Those are the things I'm not like 100% clear about. Ooh, bad rolls. I should get close to this uh, this guy to try and recharge a bit.
Interesting that the Battle Mage is hunting right now. There's some kind of pack awareness going on. Where I attacked this guy so all three of them know because they're like one group. There might be a thing similar to the the liches where any turn that an enemy wakes up, they are automatically hunting in the in there. Oh, weakened from the toxic golem, that's annoying. It makes me slightly less likely to kill dragons. Actually that might not affect the rounding too much. I got this battle mage. Oh my god, I'm weakened three. That was being much more problematic than I expected. They're dead now. I guess that's what happens when you drop your splint mail. here. Maybe a lich nearby. Yeah, that group awareness thing is a little annoying, huh? This dragon was sitting here. I 
They shouldn't be able to detect me from here because I hit his buddy. He's able to come here and... Fortunately, this guy just grappled me and wasn't able to attack me. Or didn't attack me because he used his, his action grappling. Hmm, that's a big flaw to this build, actually. It makes dealing with dragon packs a little more awkward. It's almost like you have to wait for them to start wandering. Does that mean if like there's like a, a pack of four dragons and I they're sleeping and I attack one and the other ones are all like far away even that they could all like breathe fire on me that turn? Like that just doesn't feel right. Dragon, we didn't manage the kill. So I prop this weaken minus three is probably affecting that a bit. We were at what effective plus eleven, so now we're at plus ten point seven or ten point two five. This room is full of enemies, right? So we sh I should be safe to blank up there and do some stuff.
That seems like a pack situation, but they're all still sleeping. Find things a little bit here. I like to use the mouse so people can see what I'm doing. But I'm, I'm, I'm mostly, I'm popping invis, I'm popping haste, I'm blinking around. Um, I think it's pretty clear. I'm swapping my rings. And we're doing it a lot, so it should save time and just be a little more convenient, I think. Uh, hopefully I don't forget what buttons I'm using. I do have to check the recharge rates a lot. I guess it tells me up here too. I also wanna know what the staff is at though. This is a tough room to get out of. I might have to do some crazy tunneling here actually.
funny, this guy just swapped back to Wandering. I guess, I guess they can do that when they're on the adjacent. Interesting, I actually can't blink past these guys because every tile here could be a golem for all I know. Okay, I'm guaranteed to be able to blink over here. the dragon. Uh, 
Aha, found both of our lumen stones for this step. links like that. We're on depth 31 and it's clear. So we're going to be on 32 next. There's 40 levels in the dungeon. 40 is safe. There's no monsters there at least. They can follow you down and such. So we have 32 through 39 left. Once we get off of this one, which looks very soon. That is eight floors. I feel like using a telepathy right now. Because we have to use something here or drop something to free up space. I think two ish floors per telepathy potion might make sense. Depends how they go. Because we get end up wasting telepathy potions if we wait too long, which I've done before as well. I feel like telepathy potion might be a decent use here. Just since we have to use something. So we have all of the Lumen Stones on this depth. Looks like I should be able to blink up here. Technically I don't have to take the stairs. Concerned about these explosive golems, but I actually don't kill golems in one hit, so this guy's not gonna explode on me, I think. Which means we can recharge everything for the next floor. Most excellent. Oh, I was supposed to actually use my charms before doing that though. fill my water. So I think we're going to call it quits here. And pick up again from here. 
So we just did three floors. Those are pretty clean. Let's see how the rest of the dungeon goes. I'll see you guys next time for part three, I guess. Take it easy, guys.